the Trump campaign with another major shakeup. And if you thought that Donald was unpredictable and unscripted before, fasten your seatbelts. The ride could get even wilder from here. Then each candidate facing more issues that raise questions about their trustworthiness or lack thereof. Here we go again. And also, was Aetna's move to pull out of most Obamacare exchanges political payback for the government blocking its merger? We will discuss and debate. Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman, in for Richard French. And we start with those big changes once again in the Trump campaign. Today, the tough-talking GOP nominee who says he's not changing his campaign style... I am who I am. It's me. I don't want to change it. ...is instead making changes in his campaign structure. Pollster Kellyanne Conway promoted to campaign manager. Chairman of Breitbart News Steve Bannon hired his campaign CEO. Trump said in a statement they are extremely capable, highly qualified people who love to win and know how to win. Campaign chairman Paul Manafort is still on the job amid a barrage of negative stories about his past. The latest, the Associated Press reports Manafort helped a pro-Russian political group in Ukraine secretly route at least $2 million to Washington lobbying firms. It was to influence U.S. policy, a possible federal felony. The Trump campaign shakeup came hours after he made his direct appeal to black voters. I'm asking for the vote of every African-American citizen struggling in our country today who wants a different and much better future. Trump, who has declined to speak at NAACP and Urban League events, made his comments in front of a nearly all-white crowd in West Bend, Wisconsin. Now, this shakeup is actually designed to let Trump loosen up and be more himself. Believe it or not, Trump was supposedly acting restrained while Paul Manafort was running things. Mm -hmm. Here's what The Washington Post has to say about the change. Quote, Trump's stunning decision effectively ended the months-long campaign or push by campaign chairman Paul Manafort to moderate Trump's presentation and pitch for the general election. And it sent a signal that the real estate magnate intends to finish this race on his own terms with friends who share his instincts at his side. Let's get to our panel for reaction. We're joined tonight by Michael Tobman. Michael's an independent political consultant. Dominic Carter is to his left, political journalist and author. And on the other side of the table, Mark Furnish, professor at Brooklyn Law. He was also argued before the U.S. Supreme Court. And Michael, first of all, Paul Manafort's reign over the Trump campaign lasted, what, three months? <laughs> felt, like, yeah, felt, felt like a lot longer, but I think <laughs> it was just about two and a half, three months. You, you've worked with and run a, a bunch of campaigns. Sure. What, is it, what does it mean when you, when you change the, the guy who's running the campaign? I think this situation is a very unique one because Trump is such a unique candidate. And here's what I've come to, here's the conclusion I've come to on this. Trump doesn't want to win. And he was surrounding himself with people over these past three months who were in it to win and were doing their best to temper their candidates' rougher, eccentric edges. And he's thinking to himself, oh God, I hope I don't win. What would I do if that happened? I'm gonna go back to being me, which got me through the Republican primary. My legacy and, and what people think of me is forever changed, but please don't let me win. But these kinds of changes are usually done to stabilize a campaign and point it in the right direction. Let, let's say he really actually still does want to win. Right. Is, is that ideally what the purpose of, of, of this move would have been? Generally, uh, uh, reorganizations at this late stage are to rescue floundering campaigns and redirect them. And, and we're on the re, re, restart of the rebranding version two. <laughs> that being said, in this case, I really Trump do believe. 6.0. For 6.0. <laughs> uh, in this case, I really do believe it's the candidate pulling uh, back, thinking, I, I don't, I can't do this, and uh, I'm going to go out in a blaze of glory and be myself. Dominic, the new Trump campaign CEO is Steve Bannon. He's the head of Breitbart News. Now, there may be some people out there that aren't familiar with Breitbart. Give us an idea of what Breitbart is. Well, uh, it's a far, far right of uh, uh, online service, and um, it, it's, it, makes, it makes Fox News look tame and moderate in terms of some of its positions. But I just want to uh, comment on uh, Kellyanne Conway, who's mm -hmm. moving up in the, in, the, uh, in the campaign. She's very good. Let me be clear. I don't see her signing on to something to be a loser. Kellyanne throws 100 mile an hour fastballs right down the middle. And she's a female pit bull. So get ready, because that's the type of style that she is. She's very thorough. And she doesn't let anything. It's going to be very interesting. You said Trump 6.0. It's going to be very <laughs> no, interesting. Oh, okay, okay. It's going to be very interesting to see how she can deal with Trump because she's in this thing. Believe me, 
to win. Do, do you think anybody, do you think she's really going to try to rein Trump in or, or, you know, tell him what to do? Or is this just all about letting Trump be Trump? I, I think that Donald Trump in his mind, as warped as it may be, believes that he can win if he's allowed to be himself. I really think he believes that. And I think that he feels that when he's on prompter, that he's almost like a caged tiger and can't be himself. But the problem is when he's not on prompter, God only knows what he might say. <laughs> Mark, there, there's almost a little bit of tail wagging the dog I involved here with the, with the Breitbart move into the campaign. Normally you get these extreme websites or, or sources that slowly influence the conversation on Fox or on conservative radio and, and work its way into the mainstream. Now you're just going right to the source. You've got Breitbart's number one guy right there, right next to Trump. Right, well, Trump is to some degree a product of Breitbart and of, of uh, Mark Levin and some of these conservative radio commentators. And, and the Breitbart people don't build themselves as to the right of Fox News. They uh, build themselves as center-rightists, just anti-establishment center-rightists. So I think it's going to be interesting. I think it's, it's commendable of Trump uh, to do it on his own terms, win or lose. And I also think what's gone on in the past few months is really damaging to Trump because one thing that he should have to sell himself as is a good manager, a guy who's going to bring his business techniques into the public sector. And the way the campaign's been run the past couple of months, if he can't run a, a successful campaign, how can you trust him to be president? So if, if these people are really going to do his bidding, we'll see what his management style is really like and whether possibly it could translate into success in the Oval Office. Then again, Dom, you, you know how Trump tends to work. He tends to be the guy in charge, even on the on the business side. Tend, it's really, tends it's really to be? Well, I was being polite, but... Uh, yeah, a little too polite. Donald Trump believes, I'm telling you what I know, Donald Trump believes my way or the... Most successful people do yep, believe my true. way of the highway. In fairness to Trump, they may sugarcoat it a lot better Correct. than the way he does. They may sit there and listen to others, but believe me, to reach the levels of success of the Trumps and, and others, it's my way of the highway. Rudy Giuliani was that way. Uh, See, Don, his, you've said his believe buddy me in twice Jersey. in the past couple of minutes, so Trump is having yeah. subliminal effects on it. <laughs> Don't worry. Or, Don't or you maybe, worry about that. Or, Don't or, worry. Or maybe I'm having subliminal effects Could on be. him. Yeah. Uh, one way or the other. But, but, but Trump, Trump believes uh, his way is the way. And I guess we can't argue with his success, financial success thus far. Political is a different ballgame. This has to become about Hillary Clinton out of his mouth 100% of the time to stop shooting mm -hmm. himself in the foot, stop saying stupid things and making unforced errors, and talk <laughs> about her. And I want, a I want a pony in world peace. What do any of these and things have so, to do with reality? There's so much ammunition that he has if he could just <laughs> stop the unforced errors and focus on what he has to focus and on. And constantly attacking Hillary Clinton might actually work, but Michael, yeah. Hillary's been going for the middle. She's been reaching out to independent and moderate voters and even mm -hmm. some, some moderate-leaning Republicans. Sure. Bringing a Breitbart guy onto the campaign as the CEO, the Trump campaign's reaching to the to the right again. There's, right. There aren't enough votes in the Republican base to I, win this election. I remember there? when she ran for the United States Senate. Uh, she received more votes in some parts of Massapequa, North Massapequa, which were very conservative uh, Republican-leaning areas in Nassau County. She got more votes there than there were registered Democrats. So what that told us is we had to take a guess. Female Republicans voted for Hillary against Rick Lazio. Uh, for the U.S. Senate. So it's a tried and true tactic. You don't have a home there. Your vote is your right. Your vote is a secret. Vote for me. Dominic, we also have Roger Ailes now consulting with Donald Trump, ostensibly for, I guess, campaign prep, or sorry, debate prep. Uh, Roger Ailes knows about the media and how things play on mm -hmm. TV. Mm -hmm. any, any thought that that might actually help Trump come debate time? It'll definitely help him in terms of the actual debate. It may be a political landmine outside of the debate. They're going to try their best to do damage control, considering the troubles that Ailes has had at Fox News, uh, the sexual harassment allegations, and on and on and on from repeated uh, female employees. But what you cannot take from Roger Ailes, the man is a genius. He made Fox News out of nothing. Okay, we have to be fair and balanced. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see what she did there. I see what she did. I, I really did. I, it, it just came out. Um, 
But anyway, he, he made Fox into the product of what it is today. You can't take that away from him. He advised President Nixon, and so, you know, maybe maybe he can definitely help Trump. Lord he, knows if, Trump If you can it. make Nixon attractive to the general public, you got to be a genius. <laughs> although, he's although a dark, dark dude. <laughs> if they're trying to boost their numbers among women, given the, the, the legal complications surrounding Roger Ailes right now, that might not be the most effective is way to do it. Is he definitely advising them with respect to the debate? Because I saw yeah. yesterday that, that they, they not official. It's not, that. He's so. not on the staff, and I don't think he's being paid, but they played golf in Jersey. Wow. At, well, no, I believe it's a Trump course. It. So yeah. that, that, All right, two, I'll call fun issues about the presidential race before we What's go. What's fun about this? It's like a root canal. Well, what this is. <laughs> this will be the, the laughing on. gas portion of the root <laughs> canal process. Um, the intel briefings that Trump is now getting, he got his first intel briefing today with Chris Christie there, of all people. Uh, any concern, for, and the, this, the nation is still standing, the republic is still standing, so at least that's gone so uh, that well so far. But is, is there a risk of Trump blabbing about what he's getting in the intel briefing? And Mark, is there any, is there any exposure to him, criminal exposure, if he does blab about what he gets in the intel uh, briefing? Second question first, Absolutely. anybody who's, who disseminates confidential information could have a, a criminal exposure. That's a given. Can he uh, hint at it? Can he, does is yeah, it, is it, does it, he have to quote it verbatim or can he just sort of allude to I, it? I, I, I don't think that you have to quote it verbatim, but if he drops some obvious bombshell that's otherwise unattributed, we're going to know what it is. Uh, with respect to the first question, if he can control himself, he better not hint at anything that's confidential because then he'll lose that argument that he has, the high ground argument about Hillary uh, being extremely careless with state secrets. So I would think that he would have, I would hope that he would have sufficient message discipline not to go there. I, you think they're taking his phone away from him when he walks into the room? I think they adjusted his meds or took his phone away <laughs> or something. I think it's I think it's killing him that he can't that he can't you know tweet this. I, I, you know the old saying: three people can keep a secret only if two of them are dead. In this case, it's just I don't know how he's kept it this long. Last point. Well, it's on, only been a few hours, so give that's it what time. I said. <laughs> Last point on the presidential race. I actually want to go with Michael's thesis that Trump doesn't actually want to win this thing. Do, first of all, were you just kidding, or do you no. actually believe that? You no, I, re believe I really that. do believe that. I, I, I think he, I think, as all people are, he compartmentalizes his thinking, and he's conflicted, and these things could exist at the same time, and he wants to win, and he's in it to win it, and he's thinking to himself, I really hope I don't win, and i got to sabotage this any way that I can. Um, winning the Republican primaries decisively, I believe, is probably enough for him, and as I said, it changes history. It changes his legacy and history forever. Uh, but but winning and, and becoming president, I don't I don't see how he can legitimately, in his heart of hearts, think that that's a good fit and responsible. I, I take Mike's point about uh, being conflicted and compartmentalizing stuff. I just think that the id of this guy trumps everything, no pun intended, mm -hmm. and the id and the desire to win is not something that you can so easily uh, put away a box box away with a Type A like that. I think he smells blood. I think in the reasonably water. close to, to defies some of the polls has him locked in a restroom afterwards and thinking, <laughs> "Thank God, dodge that bullet." <laughs> I don't, don't think so. Don't, I think, do you think, I think he actually he doesn't to. want to win, or do you think he sees the writing on the wall and is trying to sugarcoat it and defend his 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 ego if, when he loses? Based on actions, yes. based on what we've seen the last couple of months, your assessment has to be correct. Based on what we've seen, but knowing the Donald Trump, I know. Yeah. He doesn't like to lose. It, if he loses, all he's going to hear for the rest of yep. his life is loser. That's his it legacy. Doesn't, it, yeah. doesn't, no right, it doesn't matter that you won the nomination. Loser. Yeah. And not only are you a loser, you lost to Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I, I disagree. Look, I, how I, many people like the Buffalo Bills when they lost the three Super Bowls? Nobody mm -hmm. likes to be the, be the bridesmaid. Nobody likes to be second. You disagree? I, I disagree. I think that this upended politics in a way we haven't seen. This is this is the equivalent of like Andrew Jackson running against the establishment. <laughs> I, I really, um, I, I, I think this has changes his legacy, and he's not branded a loser. I think he's a lunatic, but I don't think he's branded <laughs> a loser. Would that be worse, being branded a lunatic as opposed to a loser? No, he's been living with that his whole life. <laughs> That's fair. Teddy Roosevelt was a lunatic. All right. on, well, we all know that Hillary Clinton has the FBI and the email controversy, and Donald Trump has the bankrupt casinos. Neither of those stories are going away. In fact, they could go from bad to worse.